Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ananya. And today I will attempt to understand the concept of the divine or the supreme being as understood by seers of Vedic literature, practicing Hindus and Hindu spiritual leaders of today. I will use the term divine as opposed to the term God, as for me the term, or no, as the term God has biblical connotations and may influence mine as well as yours understanding of, of this depiction of the divine in Hinduism as learnt mainly by the Vedas. The common understanding of everyday Hindus is that the Devatas, the Trimurti, the avatars of Vishnu, and the Devis, such as Durga, Lakshmi, and Saraswati, are conceptually equivalent to what is generally considered as the supreme god in Abrahamic religions. In layman's terms, these Hindu entities are considered as the highest forms of divinity, and I'll be comparing this understanding to Hindu literature. These are the various forms of the divine in Hinduism, and I will delve into the differences of these forms. The Atman, or soul, is an infin infinitesimal part of the Brahman. The Atman can simply be compared to a drop of water from the ocean, or the Brahman. The Atman goes through many cycles of birth and rebirth based on its karma. In simple terms, karma is the concept of reaping what you sow. Good deeds lead to positive consequences and poor choices lead to negative repercussions. One's karmic state affects the reincarnation of the Atman. All Atman is part of the Brahman. As stated in the Upanishads, Upanishads I am Atma Brahma, the self is Brahman, and Aham Brahmasi, Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. The goal, Brahman. The goal of the Atman, whether understood by the mind or not, is for the Atman to merge permanently with the Brahman. Dr. Martin Luther King borrowed this concept that all Atman is part of the Brahman, as he, and not just those who commit, or not just those who do good deeds. He used this understanding as a basis to ask his civil rights demonstrators not to lash out on those who were against their stand for equal rights for all. This was possible because he understood that all humans were a part of the divine within them and not just the nice folks. This concept of divinity being found within all of us is supported within the Bhagavad Gita. Sri Krishna also states Mame vamso jiva loke, jiva bhuta sanatana, manasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasas
This misunderstanding stems from the misinterpretation of the phrase Threastrim Shatikoti, mentioned in the Atharva Veda, Yajurveda, and Satpata Brahmana. This misinterpretation occurred as the term Koti has multiple meanings. The term Koti has two meanings, one meaning type and the other meaning crore, or 10 million. The multiple meanings of this term has caused confusion between many people. But Hindu scholars insist that there are only 33 deities as opposed to 330 million, as the 33 deities that are listed within the Vedas are reoccurring figures within other Hindu scriptures, such as the Bhagavad Gita and the Ramayana. This misunderstanding has caused many Hindus and non-Hindus to believe that Hinduism has a huge number of gods or deities, and is a, a huge number of gods and is a polytheistic religion when it actually is not. One of the greatest misunderstandings about the divine in Hinduism is the belief that the devatas are the highest form of the divine, when in fact they are, the devatas are not separate entities but are simply manifestations of the Brahman. Each devata is a doorway unto the infinite supreme reality, which is Brahman. The devatas represent various personalities and forms, therein allowing us to reflect and understand the true nature of divinity. In the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna states, Yepyanya, Yepyanya devata bhakta, Yajanta shraddha yanvita. Tepi mamad mameva konteya yajantiya avidi purkam purvakam. This translates to those who are devotees of other gods and who worship me with faith actually only worship me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. This further supports the idea that there is only one true divine who merely takes up various forms. All deities are all but a pluralistic manifestation of the Brahman. The terms Brahman, Brahma, and Brahman are often misunderstood and are a source of confusion for many of us. When Hinduism is discussed or preached, the difference between Brahma and Brahman are often confused and need to be clarified. Vedic readings and interpretations that are actually pointing to Brahman are often misinterpreted as talking about Brahma. Brahman which is Varna, is sometimes pronounced and spelled often like Brahman, which is the divine or supreme reality. Brahman is the divinity in Hinduism, or the one ultimate reality. It is sometimes pronounced as Brahm, and sometimes as Brahman. As you may have noticed, I've been, used, I've been um, typing Brahman as Brahm, parentheses, A-N. This is to show that I'm acknowledging that Brahman is also referred to as Brahm, and it's a stylization that I've temporarily, temporarily come up with just to indicate the one supreme reality as opposed to Brahman and Brahma. Brahman and Brahma. Brahma is the creator de devata, one of the masculine forms of the devatas, and often represented with four faces. It is believed that he created the universe and since universes are always in a constant cycle of creation and destruction, he also goes through the same birth and death cycle. Brahma temples are rare, and there are only a handful of known temples dedicated to him. Brahma's mention started appearing later in Vedic texts. Early Hindu scriptures mention other th trinities of devatas which do not include Brahma. Brahmin is a name assigned to a varna or category of people whose duty was to learn and teach Vedic knowledge. Bra the Brahman is referred to as many different things. He's described as pure consciousness, absolute, supreme reality, ultimate reality, parabrahman, highest universal principle, and tajalan. As the Brahman is so difficult to understand, these names are given so that we are, are able to get an idea of the power of the Brahman. 
The attributes given to the Brahman are so broad as Brahman is an ultimate reality and cannot be known to those who are bound by their senses. He is described as formless, genderless, transcendent, limitless, permanent, and beyond the mind's ability to comprehend. He is described as saguna, with qualities, nirguna, without qualities, as well as neti neti, neither this nor that. Ordinary beings cannot understand the complexity of the Brahman, and those who claim to comprehend it have not truly understood the idea. Per the Vedas, the difficulty in understanding and knowing Brahman logically is well explained in the Kina Upanishad as follows. Yadi man yase suvedati, suvedati dharme vapi nunam Tvam Veta Brahmano Rupa Yadasya Tvam Yadasya Devasvatu Nu Mimam Sameva Te Manye Vidatam. This translates to If you think that you know the Brahman well, then you know little indeed. For the form of Brahman that you see as conditioned in living beings is but a trifle. Therefore, you should inquire further about Brahman. Brahman can only be experienced when all sensory activity ceases to have an impact on the mind. When the mind itself is free from the movements of thoughts and sense objects and the torment of desires, which are the prime cause of all hum human activity and suffering, and subsides into quietude. There are difficulties in translating the Brahman in human terms. To, to define the concept is to limit it. But defining the Brahman and giving it various attributes is simply done to create a near approximation so humans can understand and relate to the concept easier. Brahman is a state which cannot be objectified without distorting it. Hence, as the Kino Upanishad declares, if you think you understand him, you truly do not. You may, emerge, you may merge into the essence of Brahman, but you will never know the boundaries of it. How far you may go into your quest for the knowledge of Brahman, there will still be gaps in your knowledge and understanding. Brahman cannot be known in a state of duality. He is not an object which can be known. He is known only in a subjective state when the duality of the known and the knower are absent. That is, to know Brahman, you must become one with Brahman without any division or duality. The Brindahara the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad declares that Brahman is truth, or Satyam Brahma. While the assertion seems to be very simple, seems to be very simple, problems arrive, arise when you try to understand or define truth. It is what you perceive, experience, or know, or is it something beyond all that? The truth we know is indeterminate relational and relative in the world of duality. While the absolute truth is a very difficult thing to comprehend, while the absolute truth is a very difficult thing to comprehend, Brahman can only be experienced when all of the sensory activity ceases to have an impact on the mind. So so those who know who know and have encountered the Brahman will not be able to tell you because they have to be um, free of their state of duality and free of their senses and ego. Neti neti, neither this nor that, is a principle of negating all rationalizations and distractions in the attempt to understand the Brahman. Rather than seeing Brahman as pervading the universe, they speak of Brahman as wholly transcendent, describable in human terms only by saying what Brahman is not. It is not coarse, not fine, not short, not long. He is odorless, tasteless, without an eye, without ears. Without voice, without name, unaging, undying, without measure, without inside, and without outside. This way of speaking stretches the mind beyond the available categories of the world to glimpse that which cannot be contained, visualized, or explained using human categories. Two negatives are used to eliminate every possible specification that one may come up to describe the Brahman. 
Nati Nati is also mentioned in the Brihadaran, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad in the conversation between King Janaka and Sage Yaj Yajnavalkya. Nirguna Brahma, or no attributes or qualities, and Saguna Brahma with qualities and attributes are the two aspects of Brahman. Nirguna Brahma has no qualities and the path to Nirguna is known as Jnana Mark or Jnana Yoga. Per Adi Shankara, Nirguna Brahma is Parabrahma and is the highest state of Brahman. Understanding Nirguna Brahma is difficult and can be achieved when a person is in a non-dual state of complete knowledge of one's Atman or soul as being the same as the transcendental, transcendental Brahman. The journey and the knowledge associated with knowing this form of the divine is also referred to as the Jnana Yoga. Shavanam tasya devasya shotavya bhava chintanam mananam tvatmali nagyasa gasya mantavya bhava chintanam Realizing that there is nothing else to be known apart from the Atman is the true Shravanam, or understanding of the text, and realizing that there is nothing else to be contemplated upon is Mananam, or contemplation in the true sense. Sagana Brahma is considered to be the Brahman that can be perceived through the limited mind or intellect, that is crippled because it sees everything through the lens of Maya, or illusion. Sagana is the form that has qualities and aspects and is definable by our mind. Sagana can be viewed as someone me and you perceive when we perceive Brahman with qualities that is Sagana. This approach is called Bhakti Yoga. Whereas Nirguna Brahma is something only perceived by Nirguna Brahman and our Atman which when in a non-dual state is in its state of merging with the Nirguna Brahman and is one with it. This approach to Bara Brahma is called Jnana Yoga. The two forms of the Brahman are the same, just in different, just different in how we perceive them based on our limitations. In this paper, we've discussed that the Vedas have deliberately deliberated extensively on the nature of the divine. Hinduism is not polytheistic and there is one divine who takes on many forms. But it is not necessarily monotheistic either, as Brahman is not an exclusive being. Divinity, as outlined in Hinduism, starts from the smallest part of the divine, the Atman, or soul. Then there are the Devatas, the Avatars, the Ishwaras, and the Trimurti, also collectively understood as the to be the representation of the divine, and also collectively known as the Saguna Brahman. The formless, attributeless. At the final stage of understanding of the divine in the Nivedas is Nirguna Brahma, the formless, attributeless, without quality and without definition, which is very hard to contemplate while we are bound by Maya and in a state of duality. Thank you. Thank you to Ananya for a great talk. Are there any questions? Personal, and then the guiding aspect in the material world, that is Paramatma and then Bhagavan. These three aspects must be discussed and understood, which is, uh, you know, we forget, and there is a lot of confusion unnecessarily being created. And another thing is that uh, you said that the living entity merge into the Brahman, but Bhagavad Gita, you know, contradicts that. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, there was never a time when all these, you know, warriors were not there and there will never be a time when they will be not there. So this thing, see, we have to present, then, you know, there should be a reference, you know, for that. Mo lot of confusion is being created because people say anything like that. But we have to find the references, proper references, so that this inconsistency can be avoided. And which is very, very significant. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have a hand down here. Is the mic? Yeah, thank you. Um, at, at the end, in the wearing the black blazer, and you took upon. I like to make one or two suggestions that might clarify things you are saying. 
One is a very important root word in Sanskrit called the, from which divinity comes from, deity comes from, the. And so what I'm saying is that you take the divinity from the root word the, and so devis, devatas, they all. Second is that it should be, it'll be better if you were to put parentheses after man, rather than, because braha means ever expanding, and man is a consciousness. But if you put only an at the end, it means land, like Rajputana, Rajput, the land of the Rajputs. So an is that. So just making suggestion that you may want. The number two, very good point you mentioned, the maya as illusion. But again, ma means measurement in Sanskrit. So ayam is a sense of. That means there are two ways to pronounce. There are two means to explain maya. Is one is ordinary ways illusion. The other way is the a sense of making anything finite. When you have infinite Brahman, to make it finite for a human being, there's a thing called Maya. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. This is uh, one more um, okay. a person in the audience. I uh, congratulate Sanjana, Arushi, also. And I want to add that this is a good testimony to the American system of education which prepares these young people to present logical exposition of some very, very difficult concepts. Sometimes, you know, we people coming from India tend to shortchange the American system of education. But the presentation made by these four girls, we need to be more appreciative of what these young people do and achieve. So I congratulate you and thank you very much. Thank you. I got a lot of help from Shashi Uncle, so I wanted to thank him for guiding me through the process of writing the paper and the, doing the presentation. Namaste. And my parents. I want to start by congratulating the young presenters and then make a small suggestion generally. From, it's okay, I don't need And cast out words from our papers. The first word is Hinduism. It was mentioned that we should use dharm instead because ism is dogmatic. Second word we should cast out is God. I think you haven't, but I'm really saying use Bhagwan or Brahman instead. Soul should not be used also because it has connotations. So use Brahman. Sacrifice also mentioned yesterday. Use Yadnya instead. And idol or Murti, uh, I mean the idol should be used. Use murti or vigraha instead. And we can also make suggestion while um, the Cape Waves Committee, while writing the papers, that these words could be edited or omitted. Then you I see a question in the front. Um. is unprecedented. I also wanted to make all four of you a very public offer. So a quick background, I am the founder and CEO of Hindupedia, the online encyclopedia of Hindutama. I wanted to make an offer if you guys are interested in continuing this line of work. Find me, reach out to me, let's figure out how I can help. Thank you.